Hey everyone, Rayo here, and welcome to my, um, I guess item review video. Um, <laughs> I've never done anything like this on my channel, but, uh, as you may know, we had the new Slayer monsters, the new Abyssal Slayer monsters released today. So that includes the new Abyssal Scourge, the Jaws of the Abyss, as well as the new, um, Abyssal Spikes, uh, Armor Spikes add-on. So, um, I've been messing around with these a little bit, and... I have been trying to get familiar with how they work, and unfortunately, I spent a lot of money, so this is just a bunch of money down the drain. Um, but honestly, I wasn't really excited about the Scourge at first, because I just, you know, I recently got the 95s, and it just kind of felt like, oh, well, why is there a new main hand weapon? But after messing around with it, I, you know, now that I bought it, I might as well try and use it. So what I'm going to do today is... I'm going to just do a challenge gem and I'm just going to do my basic rotations that I do with any boss and just see what the DPS difference is with normal gear that I use, which would be like the tier 95s and just all my gear switches. The other rotation is going to be the same thing, but just swapping out with the Langs and the Abyssal Scourge. And then the other thing I'm going to do is fuse them both and then basically uh, build up to max stacks on the Abyssal Scourge and then swap back to the Dark Shard of Lang so I can use um, Hurricane and Destroy with separate cooldowns. And just see how that all affects my DPS. I uh, just want to give a disclaimer that um, I'm not the best, <laughs> I'm not the best melee player in the world or the best runescaper in the world. Uh, I have a decent idea of what I'm doing. Like I do ED3, Care Pack and all that stuff solo or whatever, but I'm not like a god tier <laughs> BVMer. I'm still learning a lot of stuff, but... I have a decent hold on my own rotation, and so I wanted to see how this would personally affect me uh, to give my starting thoughts. Uh, the Jaws of the Abyss is actually just great when used in lieu or used in tandem with the armor spikes because the I didn't think it did at first, but actually the parasites when they proc those do count as a bleed. So you can almost assuming that your target hits you enough to proc the abyssal parasites from the armor spikes, you can get a at least plus 2% adrenaline gain from all your basics. And then that just adds on whenever you use all your other bleed effects, which would be, um, if you have the EZK, the tier 95 2H sword, then that would be another a bleed effect, which would give you another bonus plus 2%. But aside from that, you have tendrils, slaughter, and dismember. Another thing that I found is that the bleed effect has to already be on the target in order to benefit from the plus 2% adrenaline gain when using a basic so basically what i was curious about earlier is since i use dismember since it is a bleed and it is a basic is it going to give me that bonus two percent from applying that bleed right up front and it turns out that no it doesn't the bleed already has to be on the target for you to benefit so if i were to use dismember right now on this target or on this dummy it would only give me 9%. And I say 9% because I'm using the Relic Power Fury of the Small, so it gives me a bonus plus one. So all that being said, is this enough to really save melee? I have no idea, <laughs> I'll be honest. But I mean, I it's not gonna stop me from playing melee. It's just a flat out buff to melee for the most part. You know, you have to swap out Laceration Boots for the, the Trim Masterwork Boots so you can benefit from the set effect. But I mean, if you're not using Trim Masterwork, then this doesn't really affect you. Uh, you take a slight armor reduction. You take a slight strength bonus reduction, but that's kind of made up for using these boots instead. Uh, you might lose out a little bit. I haven't done the numbers, but if anything, it's minuscule. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and throw up some challenge gems and we'll see what the difference is between all three instances. And for my challenge gems, I am going to, you know, just go full out. I'm going to use um, full DPS, buff out, art out, everything that I would normally use when I'm going to do an encounter because I just want to see what it would be at the max effectiveness. I don't want to say efficiency because <laughs> I, I make plenty of mistakes. And I'm also just going to do a disclaimer. I'm not going to do this multiple times. If I mess up, whatever, I'm just going to kind of go with the flow a little bit. Just kind of take this all with a grain of salt. And you know what? I'm actually going to just use a Majorat Aura. So that might fudge the numbers a little bit, but I don't feel like resetting my Zerker Aura because I reset it way too much. <laughs> way too much earlier today trying to get footage for this. Oh, it's already started. Okay, starting a little bit late, but that's fine. All right, so that is with my normal setup with um, basically everything, everything you see here. And that was 1.5 mil 
uh, DPS. Now, one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to Adren Pot a second time, which it's going to be kind of easy to just make sure I don't do <laughs> for the next ones. So I'm just not going to Adren Pot for the other two take. I also messed up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and wait for this gem to run out, and then we'll try it with just swapping out the Dark Shard of Lang and just using the Abyssal Scourge. Um, another thing I forgot to do is weapon poison, which um, I'm going to just leave that out and just kind of see where it falls. And then maybe at the end, I'll do another one with the poison dose just to kind of see how that affects the actual overall DPS. All right. Um, let's see. I'm really curious. 14... 81 okay so just the difference right there i will say the whole entire time felt a lot more sustained and there was a period of time where i kind of and i guess this kind of balances out but there's a period of time where i kind of stalled and i um i was just kind of idle for a second because i didn't realize my zgs was still on cooldown so i kind of messed myself up a little bit right there but overall langs beat that but I will say that could be very different depending on poison. Like poison could make that a massive difference because it just hits so much more often with no skill uses. It's just a passive effect. So it has just a much more consistent way of uh, proccing poison. Many more hits uh, being done. Now we're going to test this with switching between the whip and the langs, mainly for the hurricane and destroy split. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I can't imagine it's going to be insanely different. We'll give it a shot, see where it falls, and take it from there. All right. Wow. 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 <laughs> okay. That's a pretty big difference. That is a pretty big difference. Now, that is... I messed up pretty i mean i mess up in all three in to some fashion so i guess it evens out a little bit here and there but with just swapping back and forth for the sake of hurricane i ended up almost increasing it by 100 to 125k i can't remember exactly what the first one was but the thing that i messed up a lot on with this was i forgot to bleed an assault which is huge 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 because that basically makes it so i can't do another uh, threshold the other thing is that um, the amount of times I messed up swapping to a Lang Sword to separate Destroy and Hurricane, I did that about three times, which is also pretty darn big. So I want to do this one more time, and I want to do it with Weapon Poison, and I want to see how much it boosts from swapping between the Scourge as well as the Main Hand Lang and just see how much of a difference weapon poison makes because i was basically camping the scourge the abyssal scourge and then just swapping to the shard of lang uh for the sake of these thresholds but just doing that i ended up adding another 100 to 125k ish that's pretty pretty good it's pretty darn good we'll give that a shot and see how it pans out all right so we're gonna try this with uh weapon poison uh unfortunate thing here is uh my majorat aura ran out because i had to run uh, go to work for a few, but um, we are going to... I don't really think there's anything that's going to give us a DPS increase. Um, I would say Dark Magic, but that adds damage hits, so that would kind of fudge the, the poison procs a little bit, and I don't want to use that because it's not an accuracy boosting thing like Supreme Brawler or Zerker would be because um, if you're not really hit capping, like, if, or if you're not hitting accuracy cap, then you probably wouldn't use Dark Magic. Personally, I wouldn't because I'd rather reset an aura because it doesn't feel good to miss. But because um, I'm pretty sure these things are 100% accuracy just because of the way they're normally set up. So I'm not going to bother doing that. So take this next test with a grain of salt for sure because uh, we're going to be missing that 5% damage increase. But yeah, we're going to try this with poison and see how it goes. All right whoa wow i messed up a lot like a lot a lot a lot and i still got a decent <laughs> i still got quite a decent amount of dps there 
I mean, I might be I might be a little bit overexcited, but I mean, I got to be honest. I was not a fan of the whip at first. Like I wasn't an, I wasn't a fan of like the switch, I guess, but it was because of this reason. I feel like the whip is just really good. <laughs> I feel like it's silly not to buy. I mean, I, if you're going to be camping melee, I feel like it's got to be your main weapon and then Lang has to be a swap for hurricane and stuff cuz dude, the damage is just great. Um I wonder how it actually turns out in a real encounter because what would be best I feel for like just an observation I'm not even 100% sure if this is right but what I feel would be best is building up to 50 stacks with the whip and then just having your armor spikes replenish the stacks but the thing is is that it only lasts for five seconds so you would have to have them replenish fairly quick with it only being a 25% chance to replenish it wouldn't feel too good to lose all 50 stacks. If they lasted a little bit longer and did a little bit less damage, I feel like it would make more sense for Langs. But I mean, I I don't know. I feel like it's it's a tough call. It's a tough call. This is a if you had to make an upgrade decision based on one or the other, I guess I would say whip. But I also don't have the best, <laughs> like the most educated decision on this thing because I'm still pretty new to like really focusing on refining my rotations and all that stuff so i'm still pretty new to like harder content like ed3 and care pack so there's definitely well like way more experienced pvmers than me in my experience the whip is great the hood is great and it's it's a very strong upgrade uh do i think you should buy it right now probably not because it's going to be very expensive but overall very strong upgrade very strong upgrade. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like, uh, drop a comment down below, letting me know what you thought. And let me know if you're going to upgrade to the whip and what your experiences are with the whip. And if I messed up like any rotations or if you noticed that I was doing anything wrong, for sure, let me know in the comments down below. Because like I said, there's a lot of things I don't know um, when it comes to rotations and stuff in RuneScape. I've just been doing what works best for me or what I think makes sense. So any suggestions, I'm all ears. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rayo, and I'll see you next time. Take care.